Hello, everybody. Um, warm regards from Brno, Czech Republic. I am uh, very happy I can uh, present uh, our experience with the stroke pumps wave. And I will try to persuade you that uh, 20 minutes is the ideal time. So this is where I'm broadcasting from. Um, that's uh, my hospital and my university here. Um, I live in the second largest city in Brno in, in Czech Republic. So you might remember that then when thrombolysis started, international guidelines recommended that uh, thrombolysis should be initiated optimally within 60 minutes after arrival of patients to hospital. But uh, this concept was challenged by uh, colleagues from, from Finland who demonstrated that uh, this uh, door to middle time could be reduced to as short as 20 minutes. And we like this concept a lot. And we actually develop a, a, a whole system, you know, how to, um, how to uh, establish this in the whole hospitals um, in our country here in Czech Republic. And what we achieved was that we shortened door to middle time to nearly 20 minutes, basically, in all hospitals. So here you see our door to needle times uh, that were around 70 minutes and then they were decreasing. So now we are very close to 20 minutes. And this applies to both comprehensive stroke centers and primary stroke centers, which are in blue, blue and red. Okay, so um, we think that 20 minutes should be there for the implementation goal for intravenous thrombolysis. And the other 20, stands for the 20% thrombolysis rate. So right now we treat about uh, 23, 25% of all ischemic strokes with thrombolysis. So therefore we think that this stroke 2020 is a good implementation goal for intravenous thrombolysis. And uh, this was published this year in European Stroke Journal. Now, one question is whether um, treatment with 20 minutes is feasible. But the other question is how good this is for patients. And uh, let me present you the data that we just submitted for publication this week. That is the analysis of all patients treated with intravenous thrombolysis between 2004 and 2019. There were 18,000, over 18,000 patients. And we were looking at how a different outcomes such as modifying ranking scale and intracerebral hemorrhage and parenchyma hemorrhage and mortality are dependent on door to middle time. And you see a quite clear pattern. Um, the outcome is improving and the bleeding is getting less and the mortality is getting less. Now we will limit these patients only to patients treated within 20, uh, between 2015 and 2019, then the pattern is the same. And if we add the thrombectomy, uh, which became the standard of practice in 2015, then the pattern is more or less the same, except that uh, uh, the association between any intracerebral hemorrhage and door renal time is neutral. Okay, so it's uh, so the treatment within 20 minutes is not only feasible, but you know it actually provides the benefit to patients. So how did we achieve this? Uh, basically, we use several approaches, but the two of them are most important. And this is the benchmarking. So we started to collect the data from stroke centers and we started to benchmark them against each other. Um, so we created, uh, of course, a little bit of competition, but it also um, allowed uh, the hospitals understand their performance. They, can, uh, they knew who was the best center. So we have these best centers to present, you know, in the conferences, how they do it and so on. So we use the rescue registry for this benchmarking, which is used basically globally, as you can see here on the map, where the blue countries are those that participate in rescue. And this is one of the pages that uh, gives you the uh, benchmarking against, um, against the national uh, uh, average. In Czech Republic, we have actually a little bit different system. Here we can see the performance of every hospital. And this, of course, requires, this is good, but it requires the agreement between hospitals. Uh, and we would definitely recommend this approach. But even if you compare your performance with the, let's say, national average, that's definitely very, very valuable information. Now, the other things that we did was a simulation training. 
um, and uh, all these uh, all these pieces that we believe are important for building a quality services we put into this figure and we call this implementation puzzle uh, so there are all these puzzles you know that fall into four categories like people stakeholders tools and documents which we believe are important for for quality uh, improvement okay so now um how do we do it so um you might remember that in previous conferences i showed you some videos uh, from real cases now i will switch uh, to the video which is explaining uh, how we approach our patients within the first 20 minutes and uh, it's uh, it will not be the real case it will be simulated case so here we are and uh, here we have an entrance to the building and nearly behind the entrance there is the city scanner so if the stroke comes they come by the car by the emergency medical services car and then the car stops right here and then offload the patient and they go directly to city scan okay, so what they do they will just take the patient out of the out of the car out of the ambulance they go through the door and here they come to the city scanner so here is the our city scanner so it takes about 30 seconds to go to the city scan. So here is the entrance to the city scan. All right. Hello, this is Dr. Mikulik. Hi, this is the EMS operator. I'm transferring you to the EMS car. Okay. Hello, hello, this is Dr. Mikulik, Santan's Hospital. Hello, hello, doctor. Hello. Uh, we have a patient, yeah. male, 65 years old. Yeah. Uh, his wife calls the ambulance. Yeah. Uh, she was at home with him. Uh, about 11.30, he stopped talking, developed right-sided weakness. Okay. Uh, so we're bringing him in. Uh, his blood pressure is 206 over 105. Okay. His O2 saturation is 96%. Okay, so now we call the CT scan. Now we need to call the stroke unit nurse. What they will do, they will enter the patient into the hospital information system. Okay, and they will print out all the paperwork that needs to be done before patient arrives. Any data about this patient? So. And yes, this patient actually was here in the hospital. He was actually seen by the ophthalmologist, so there is, and it was like um, one year ago. From the stroke unit to the CT scanner. So here is our stretcher. And this stretcher, so it's a portable bed, and then we have a portable monitor on a stretcher, which can measure, of course, blood pressure, it can measure saturation, it can do EKG, but we don't do EKG in the CT scan. And then we take our stroke bag with us, uh, so it's a very heavy bag. It has everything inside for any emergent situation in the hospital that you can imagine. So this is not used only for stroke, this is used for any emergency. Even have the things for a patient. Uh, but of course for the stroke you don't need this part. But what we of course what we need is the actila.
Hello, sir. How are you? Hey. Uh, my name is Mr. Lee. You're in the Santos Hospital. You might have a stroke. What we will do is a CT scan. We will just now move you to the CT table. Okay. Uh, right. He was last in normal okay. at 11:30 uh, this morning. Right-sided weakness. Uh, okay. Blood pressure was 206 over 105. Okay. Let's do one, two, three. Now. Right. Yeah. You need anything else for me? Now uh, the blood pressure. What was the blood pressure? Uh, 206 over 105. Okay. You raise your hand. Okay, good, thank you. It is up. Thank you. Okay, that's it. Okay, it is up. Stop. Okay. What's your name? Tell me your name. Larry. Okay. Alright, good. Sir, so we will just move you now. We will do a CT scan, okay? No allergies. His blood pressure is 210 over 105, so let's give him 25 milligrams of the brown deal. So um, here we saw how we performed uh, intravenous thrombolysis and mechanical thrombectomy. I actually uh, skipped that part when patient was treated with intravenous thrombolysis unintentionally, but uh, patient received intravenous thrombolysis uh, like at around uh, 12 or 30 minutes from the arrival to hospital. So I think that uh, this uh, video was to demonstrate uh, the pre-notification then uh, how we um, uh, how we heads up the, the CT scan, uh, how we bring our stretcher to um, to CT scanner. We are waiting for a patient. Then we do the patient history, patient examination, and the uh, CT, CTA, and uh, CT perfusion. Then we initiate intravenous thrombolysis, and then the patient is moved for for mechanical thrombectomy. Uh, so. Um, this approach will allow you to uh, initiate intravenous thrombolysis nearly always within 20 minutes. Usually it's faster. It usually takes around 12 to uh, 15 minutes. So this is definitely leading to the shortening of the clinical time. And it's also shortening, of course, onset to treatment time, which is the, the driving factor for the success of intravenous thrombolysis. There is, by the way, now the, all the new evidence why the interval from the onset to treatment is important. And this is coming from the mobile stroke unit. I like this study published by uh, Professor Jim Grota, which uh, demonstrated that uh, once they uh, shorten time from uh, last uh, uh, known uh, to be well to the TPA treatment from 108 minutes to 72 minutes, that was actually translated into a lot of benefits. So you see how the ranking scale was improving. For example, there were 25% of patients achieving modified ranking scale um, zero um, if they were brought with emergency medical services to the hospital 
but if they were treated within the, within the mobile stroke unit, actually there were 11% um, more patients were actually cured from stroke. So this is a, this, that, that shortening actually translates into a huge uh, clinical benefit. So even what, what, what we are doing right now, what you saw on the video, we are quite close actually to 100 minutes from the, uh, from the onset to treatment time. So, so um, it well documents that the sh shortening even more, it provides another additional benefit. And what also these studies demonstrate that you do not need any uh, uh, sophistication. So um, this is from the methodology of this paper, uh, which says that the, each mobile stroke unit was staffed by one or two paramedics and seat technologists and a critical care nurse. And so that's it basically. And then you treat patients somewhere on the parking lot with intravenous thrombolysis and the vascular neurology specialist supervise management on board or remotely through telemedicine. So in conclusion, uh, treatment with TPA is not that much about sophistication, but about simplification. Success of treatment with TPA is hugely driven by speed. Faster is definitely better. So I hope that uh, uh, this uh, presentation give you some inspiration that you, uh, that you like the video and uh, I'm very much happy to answer your questions. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.